Hi, my name is Jason. Today I'm going to talk about small parts and big boxes. How does this happen and how do we fix it? So I ordered this clip because I wanted to spy on the company that sold the clip to me. I wanted to see what kind of marketing they do after the sale. Spoiler alert, they didn't do any marketing after the sale. Uh, but I didn't find that out until after I bought a part. So I went on their website, found the cheapest thing I could find, which is this $1.50 clip, and I paid $8 to have it shipped to me. So I spent almost exactly 10 bucks. And when it arrived, it came in one of these, which is a flat rate box. Now this is a regional flat rate box. And if you don't know what a regional flat rate box is, make sure you Google that or talk to the UPS or USPS rep. Uh, regardless, the problem here is this doesn't make any sense. This thing weighs less than an ounce. It's the size of my small finger. I could have very easily put this in a padded envelope, put postage on it, and mailed it anywhere in the United States for two bucks. But instead, it was shipped to me in this package, which cost at least $7.30. So why does this happen, right? Why does someone who's doing order fulfillment spend $7 when they could have spent two? There's a couple answers to that question. The first answer is they just don't know about the post office padded envelopes and postage. Uh, believe it or not, that is a common problem, right? We talk to a lot of companies that are just getting started with auto parts e-commerce and we're the marketing company they call and we start talking about how operations and how they're going to make money. And one of the questions I always like to ask is, are you going to use UPS or USPS or FedEx? And if the answer isn't, we're going to use a mix of all three, I like to dig into why, right? Because a lot of times the post office is the cheapest way to ship especially small things like this, the cheapest way to ship across the country. So if you don't know about the post office and all the options that are available to you, you know, absolutely you can go on their website, you can go to stamps.com, you can learn a ton. But my recommendation would be to contact the local post office and ask them to have one of their commercial reps come and visit you. It's free, they will sit down with you, they will look at what you're shipping, they will help you figure out the best way to get what you're shipping out the door for as little as possible. The second reason that this happens is it's mostly just not paying attention to things that matter. So if you are a fulfillment person, you might be saying to me, Jason, yeah, that's great. Posted, padded envelopes and $2 postage. I got to fill a hundred orders a day. I don't have time to mess around with figuring out how much this weighs and finding an envelope and whatever. And if, if that's your role, I hear you, right? That means that someone that is helping you do your job needs to provide you with the right tools, right? But it's also a question of just paying attention to this stuff, right? So what we would recommend is auditing some of the orders that have gone out in the last month or the last six months and asking yourselves, is there a way we could have sent this order cheaper? And if the answer is always no, congratulations, right? You're doing a great job with managing your costs and shipping and fulfillment. But if you find stuff like this as an educational opportunity and maybe even a process change, maybe parts that are under a certain dollar threshold get shipped by a different person with a different setup. Maybe, um, maybe there's an incentive for people who uh, manage to keep shipping costs per down, like you hit a certain average or you can go under the average by a certain percentage. And there's lots of different ways you can tackle this problem. But uh, to sum up, uh, the key here is to avoid shipping tiny little things in big boxes because generally speaking, it just costs you money.